I'm here with Shelly Ryan. Shelly is a colleague and a friend. Uh, it's great to see you here in, <laughs> in sunny Cartagena. Well, it's night now. It's yeah. Um, we're on this second day. We're at the end of the CX Summit, uh, which is the largest, I think it's the largest uh, customer experience and BPO industry event in Latin America, uh, certainly in Colombia. Um, so first, it's great to see you down here in Colombia. Oh, it's been a while. I know it has. Yeah, I think we're <laughs> like at the Peter last time we were in Windsor. Right, a Peter yeah. Ryan's thing, mm -hmm. exactly. So tell me, what, uh, uh, what I, this is, I think this is the first time I've seen you at the CX Summit. Mm -hmm. um, so tell me a little bit about why you decided to come and your first impressions of the, of the summit. Yeah, it is a fantastic organization, I have to say, first of all. I was shocked at how many people were here. I mean, all, over 700 people. Mm -hmm. And the best thing about it is that it wasn't like old people like you and me. They were young people. Yeah. And that's really what we need in the BPO industry. As we look at Omnichannel, we're looking at the metaverse. And that really interested me because all the sessions were talking about those things and more. Mm -hmm. And that's really what's driving business today. It's interesting because you saw some of the speakers and even talking to some of the exhibitors, they're doing these innovating things. They're talking about how blockchain uh, is being applied in the contact center. Yep. And that's something I, I honestly never thought of, how these different technologies um, distributed finance. Uh, and then how do you apply customer experience to these new modalities of not just um, of commerce, but of investment. People are now using uh, um, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies as, okay. as stores of value. And because they're not traditional banks, people still need some type of customer service, but it's not just, it's not traditional because it's distributed. And that creates a whole new layer of challenges, right? Yeah, and actually blockchain is the next technology for call centers. It is one that's going to help um, secure omnichannel, secure the transactions and the workforce management, all of that and above. I think it's really going to be something we have to take a look at. Great, fascinating. One of the things I wanted to ask you mm -hmm. is um, Let's talk about your company because I know that you, you have a considerable company. You have some very interesting specialties that are relevant not just to BPO but really to the professional services industry. Give me an idea of what Ad Hoc Communications does. Yes, we do a little bit of everything, quite frankly, I have to say. If you think about it, we are ones that are um, marketing departments in a box for B, B2B, B2C, and business services, outsourcers, call centers in particular, if we're in, talking about call centers. And really what we do is we help them build demand. Build demand by communicating, build demand by helping with them with a sales channel, build demand by helping them scale in different mm -hmm. geos. So the reason why we're particularly interested in Latin America is that they are looking for sales scalability in North America. And we're the ones that they usually call to help build their presence in North America, Western Europe, Eastern Europe, and APAC. And those are the places where we, where we have our team members. And Ad Hoc's been in business for now 26 years. And prior to that, I was in financial services and online banking, ATM, EFT, ACH, all of that great vernacular, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so all of those talents are put to use in helping financial services, telecommunications, travel, all those verticals that call centers in particular, the ones that you and I work with, want to scale with. And so Ad Hoc is one, and the reason why I named the company Ad Hoc as the founder and the owner is because we're on demand. Okay. They can turn us on, turn us off, and that's very attractive to the LATAM marketplace, but also very attractive to the outsourcing community in general because they tend to offshore some of their marketing uh, executives and their resources and sometimes you just need a little more horsepower and we bring that. You said something really interesting. Um, working a lot in Latin America and the Caribbean, I see where companies that are based down here 
often falter or struggle as they try to enter the U.S. market because even though that there is a strong cultural affinity, there are nuances that cause them to struggle. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. The marketing, the flavor of marketing, if you will, is, very, is a little bit different. It's fascinating because you'll see the big global companies get it and they understand that yeah. and they just like McDonald's tailors their menu a little bit for mm -hmm. different markets we have to tailor our not just our marketing but our approach yeah. even our sales approach if we're going to go and approach somebody and say let's go to lunch and let's go do some business yep. that's very different not just say from Colombia to the US but from Mexico to Colombia very different business culture yeah here, here's where I see they fall and this is often um, very predictable. Mm -hmm. One is they enter the market and they hire a bunch of salespeople. They're unsupported. Mm -hmm. And then they say, well, we'll hire an inside sales or a cold calling team. But they have no marketing and no one knows who they are. Mm -hmm. And so I always counsel them do the marketing first because then you would have the leads and the demand gen and then bring the salespeople. Then they also hire brokers. And you and I and Peter Ryan have talked about this um, ignosium is that it, it doesn't work, right. frankly. You need to have an integrated marketing plan where there's some content, there's some thought leadership, there might be some events, there might be you know, demand gen, a whole integrated campaign. And then lastly, a lot of times they don't put the budget behind it. And that's really key. So it doesn't have to cost a fortune, but you do have to put an investment into your marketing so that your sales guys are properly supported. And understand how marketing works too. Some people think that marketing works like, okay, I put an ad in the paper for one week and nobody called me yet. It must right. fail. Maybe it failed. You know, I put yes. one ad on the radio. Exactly. <laughs> right. Well, and, and ads are interesting too because a lot of the uh, newer marketers are putting a lot of money into digital. Mm -hmm. Google ads, um, Facebook ads, and waiting for the phone to ring. Right. It's not going to, right? Especially in our industry, it's a relationship type industry. It's who you know, your your um, reputation, and then also what your value, what your mm -hmm. what your value proposition. And that last one's pretty key. And as you know, as a as a thought leader yourself, you have to have the messaging straightened out before you go sell yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing that we do a lot of with companies around the world is we help them with their messaging. What is it that makes them so different? What is it that makes them unique? You know, what's their differentiator and then what's their value prop. And that's key. Right. I think one of the things that companies have to understand is that marketing prepares the prospect. Okay, right. so that when the, the sales process begins, it's not the sales process. There is a prospect that is prepared and that is familiar and that is open to receiving your story mm -hmm. and to understanding and to listening to what you have to offer. Okay, but if you right. call me up and say, who, who, who are you? Right? Um, then if I have to, if I'm the salesperson and I have to do the job of marketing yeah. and at least you've never even heard of me, yes. then I'm going to have a more of a struggle. And so marketing really is to pave the way. And that's where, like you said, a lot of companies down here um, either try to do it on the cheap. I have, you know, you and I have both had people call us up and say, "Look, uh, mm -hmm. why don't you uh, give us some Ready leads?" Sure. And I'll, I'll, and I say, "Look, oh, so in other words, let me rephrase that. You want me to give you free marketing right. qualified leads <laughs> and not pay for them, and only get paid if you happen to do yeah. something down the road." Right. <laughs> but look, here's the here's the other thing that's probably pretty key, is that a lot of the companies who want to scale in the states, they don't know who their buyers are. Uh -huh. You know? So what they do is they say, oh, just market to anybody. But <laughs> are they the ones you want to, and will they buy from you? And so personas are very important. The buyer persona. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and so I, I think that would be another tip if, if we were you know, talking about tips, right? You know, the messaging, the personas, the integrated plan, but also having that face-to-face -face connection with your buyers, because it's pretty key, especially in this industry. Absolutely. Now, help me understand just concisely, mm -hmm. companies should contact Ad Hoc Communications when what's their what does that company look like and what is that um, situation that they're facing that what's the ideal time that yeah. we need to reach out what's to Shelly and Ed Hawk? right yeah so pick up the red phone right when you want to scale 
when you want to go globe, mm -hmm. global, uh, when you might have a, an issue with your messaging, you know, the phones aren't ringing or we have a situation where maybe a product isn't moving as quickly as it needs to, because quite frankly it might be that we need to re-swizzle what's been said about the yeah. product, the service, the company, what have you. And then just quite frankly the demand generation, do you need to create leads? Usually our profile is a mid-market company in a business services industry, call center is one in particular, but also the B2B, B2C um, technology companies that may be either uh, a startup or a mid-market, but then also maybe a bigger uh, technology company that needs to pivot, needs to rotate, but needs to rotate it pretty fast. Okay. Now I understand though, you know, we talk about mid-market companies, but mm -hmm. I know that you've done some exciting things with some of these new, I don't know what they call it, Web 3.0 yes. companies, and you're doing you're yeah. in some, some pretty cool things. Yep. So let's kind of get outside the box, because I know that's sort of like a, a separate segment for you, but let's mm -hmm. go ahead and talk about that a little bit, mm -hmm. and maybe if you want to touch one what you're doing and who it might be who might be interested in finding out more about it yeah web3 i mean we all have to realize that that is coming and it's coming fast so the metaverse and nfts and crypto and blockchain we have a separate company at least i have a separate company that helps call centers in particular implement blockchain in their organization and so we work with them to not only implement it but also to train their employees and their stakeholders so they understand that their job isn't um, at stake, mm -hmm. you know, they're not going to be shut out the door, but maybe even retrained into a blockchain enabled uh, position. And I mean, it's key that I think the call center industry looks at blockchain as the next thing that they're going to put on their RFP list. Mm -hmm. Are you ISO certified? Are you PCI certified? Are you blockchain certified? Wow. And we're the only ones in the world, the CX Blockchain Institute is the company name, only ones in the world who will uh, certify call centers for blockchain, being blockchain ready, and then recertify them every year to make sure that they're continuously on the leading edge. That's really important because you can either disrupt or be disrupted, right? That's right. Right. Well, it's a differentiator. It's certainly a differentiator because as you look at all of the call centers now, some of them pretty much look the same. Yeah. And people, um, technology, and process is what they always say. But if you have blockchain, that's a game changer. Wow. And like you said, I think we saw such a young crowd here, uh, which did. is which is not that we're old yet, but <laughs> but still, it's really cool because I think that a lot of these guys get excited about this and really want to um, participate. How can people reach uh, your organization? Yeah. So our website for ad hoc is adhoccr.com. A d h o c c r.com. Mm -hmm. And if they want a little more information about the Blockchain Institute, it's CX Blockchain. Uh, dot org. Wonderful. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks.